Right, I tell you, dear champs, now is your PC trash compared to the new MacBook Pros? Well, it's a bit of a complicated answer, but I'll tell you something now. It's a bit of yes and no, but we'll get into that in a sec. But the whole TLDR of this is these new MacBook Pros, the 14 and 16 inch, which by the way, I will be getting in and I will be testing them compared to all these other PCs, Macs, etc. So make sure you sub up and see if what they're saying is true because the TLDR of what they actually said performance wise, this is not even getting into all the other stuff, which I'll get into in a sec. But just performance wise, comparing it to Beast laptops, have a look there. Uh, MSI 14 EVO, MSI GP66, this is CPU performance, there's the GP66, the one they're comparing it to for the CPU, no jokes, they're very powerful laptops. But what Apple are saying is, is basically they have the same CPU performance as the fastest Intel 11th generation chips in, you know, powerful gaming laptops, but using much less power. We'll get into the minutiae of that in a sec, but they also compared it to the GE76 Raider with a 165 watt high performance GPU. And basically they said the M1 Max, which is their high end CPUs because there's two, there's the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The M1 Max, you can get the 32 core GPU and basically they are saying it's nearly as powerful as a 165 watt RTX 3080 but uses 100 watts less power. And that goes for using a battery too, right? <laughs> Once you take the battery power out of that, you know, GE76 Raider, yeah, the performance just drops off a cliff, right? They're saying at about, you know, just probably shy of 60 watts, 55, 60 watts, they're getting just as much power as a 165 watt RTX 3080. So basically, woof, that is just, wow, using much less power. They are getting pretty much the same performance of what you're getting out of the most powerful PC laptops. That is just mind blowing, especially the GPU part. I never expected that. But of course, sub up. I will be testing that out. Now let's get a bit into the minutia here. Actually, when it comes to power, okay, so we'll look at the 16 inch. And when it comes to power, do not think that the MacBook Pro 14 and 16, even though you can get the same CPUs in both of them, don't think that they're the same because have a look at this. We have the 16 inch here. We are using 140 watt power brick there. Now it says USB power adapter. This is a bit misleading. Yes, it is USB, meaning the cable that plugs into the power brick is USB-C, but it goes to MagSafe, okay? MagSafe 3. The reason they're using MagSafe is you can only put 100 watts through USB-C. Would they have brought it back if USB-C could power 140 watts? Only they really know. But if we have a look at the 14 inch here, it's 67 watts for the 8 core M1 Pro and 96 watts for the 10 core M1 Pro or the M1 Max. Now you can actually charge it USB-C, but it doesn't say that's enough to power it. It's saying the 96 watt power adapter fast charge capable, but I'm not sure you'll be able to power it. I don't think they're actually engineered to take that much power through the USB-C. We'll find out, I guess. But wow, right? Now I cannot look at this thing and not look at this notch and think, what are Apple doing? I mean, even though it's got the notch there, the bezels are still pretty big. I would say, and why have they got a notch? It's not Face ID, it's just a 1080p webcam. Let me show you something. In 2020, I told you your laptop will look like this one day, but the new MacBook Pro still doesn't look like this. This has a 1080p webcam up the top. Yes, on that top bezel. No need for a notch, and the bezels are thinner. So what are Apple doing, man? Come on. That's all I'm going to say about the notch forever, I think. Um, whatever. Also with these new Macs, we do get SD card slot, Thunderbolt 4 and HDMI. But unfortunately, that HDMI is not 2.1. Now, I can't complain about that too much considering you can actually connect it to three 6K HDR displays and a 4K TV or big display. And you'll still be able to connect the high impedance sort of headphones and actually put an SD card in there too. So, wow, for connectivity. So if you had a look at my other video with the leak sort of benchmarks, and there was some guesswork in there too, but it turns out that were very accurate. At least according to Apple, you've got to listen to what he says carefully because he was talking about multi-core, okay? I wasn't talking about single core because I suspect the Intel will be faster in single core. But if you listen to him carefully, he says in multi-core, the eight core CPU at its like highest performance is the same performance as the M1 Pro and Max, 
but uses much more power. And that's true, right? Because this graph is not representative because it's only like using 65 watts. Those Intel CPUs can use 125 watts or even more depending on the, you know, the laptop. And Apple are obviously going to show their best side, right? They're going to show where they look best compared to the PCs. Obviously, this is why they didn't talk about single core because the fastest single core CPU I've used was over 1600 in Cinebench, which is the 11950H. And that was in a thermally constrained laptop. I imagine that could get near 1700 in a, you know, a really high performance laptop. But it's close enough in single core. It's the same multi-core. So basically, at the end of the day, the same performance as the best PCs, but using much less power. It's actually interesting to see they actually had to add more wattage. They had to add more weight, more thickness to this MacBook Pro 16 compared to the Intel version. Like, why didn't they do that with the Intel version? They had to really beef this up to get the performance out of those chips, but um, they got the performance there and it's still much less power than the Intel system. But um, why were the Intel system so thin? I don't understand. It doesn't compute in my head. They have much more power efficient chips and they're making them bigger and thicker and using more powerful bricks and it's just weird. And also, these are going to have the best mics. They're going to have the best speakers without a doubt compared to PCs. And look, let's talk about it now. Does this laptop kill the PCs? I can't make an argument if we're talking about high performance PC laptops or premium PC laptops compared to MacBook Pro. I can't make an argument for a PC laptop unless you need to game or there's something specific on Windows that you need. If you're a content creator, it's just going to be much better with these MacBook Pros. They're going to be faster. They're going to be less noisy. And this is the only laptop that has a proper HDR display. Now, it's not 4K. So, you know, the PC laptops, you can get 4K. So you can get a super sharp display. I don't know why they didn't include a 4K. I suspect it has to do with sort of retina. They'd like to double their pixels. And if you have 4K, you're probably scaling in between. But this is the only laptop where you can actually grade HDR content okay and that is everything for me now because I'm going to start doing only HDR content I'm going to be using this laptop and look unless you game or need something on Windows how can you make an argument for the Windows laptops it's expensive but it is just out of this world well at least what they've shown make sure you sub up and see my test I will be comparing it to the most powerful PCs and we'll really see I mean 120 hertz display are you joking a content creation display that is 120 hertz can you believe that I've never seen a content creation HDR like wide color gamut display that is 120 hertz I've never seen it and this is just going to be an amazing laptop. I can't wait to get them in and I think I've found my new content creation. And let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Stay tuned for my content. Tally ho.